Just like to start by saying a big thank you to everyone who attended the Skyland photo walk at the Bucholet of Moor on Saturday past. It was really lovely to meet you all and see the faces behind the photographs that I see in social media. As you know, when you were there, the Et of Moor waterfall wasn't really a waterfall. The River Coupel was more like the Coupel Burn, but everyone made the best of what the conditions gave us. Uh, this photo here that I'm going to put up now is by Fiona Wallace, one of the attendees, and you can see what a difference a day makes in it. And that's what I envisaged when we went there because that's the first time for me anyway that I've never seen the water in full flow. When we moved up the river, everyone made the best of what we had and we had the magnificent Bucholet of Moor as a backdrop with the moody, moody skies that we had that day. And as I said, what I would do for you is I would edit one of my photographs. As you know, Luminar 4 is coming out in late autumn. As that is not available to everyone yet, I'm going to edit a photograph I took on the day in Luminar 3 and show you the full process from start to finish. My workflow for Luminar is I use it as a plug-in. So I have it as a plug-in and it'll work as a plug-in for Photoshop or Lightroom. I set everything up in Photoshop that I need, my raw editing, and then I take it into Luminar to finalise the image. So this video here will show you my workflow. Everyone's got different workflows. This is just the one that I use. So without further ado, let's dive right into this edit. Okay, what I've got is I've got two images here, one focusing the background and one focusing the foreground rocks. Background focus, foreground focus. Right, what I did when I was editing these, I selected both in the raw editor and edited them both at the same time so as that everything I adjusted in one slider happened to the other image. So I'm going to blend these images together to let you see it happening. Right, now we have both images open and I'm just going to check in this number 867, this will be the foreground image, yes, and 868 is the background. So that's us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, Add Open Files, and Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images, and click OK for that. And what Photoshop will do is it will stack both of the images together, and it will allow us to blend these before taking them into Luminar 3. So as we know, 868 in this is the background, 867 is the foreground. So I'm just going to rename them. What I'm going to do is, you can see here, if I turn that on and off, you can see there's a gap around the edge. So what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to crop the image in so that I know where I'm going from. So the foreground here is the sharpness. I need to get rid of the background here so that this background element shows through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask a reveal all mask, which is a white mask, and I'm going to paint in black. So I've got the soft round brush, and I'm going to paint in black here. Right, so now that that's blended together, what I'm going to do is go Shift Alt Command E, and now we have both of these blended together within that. The next thing is when we get to Luminar. Filter, this is a, is a plugin. Skyrim software, Luminar 3. Some of the filters I have in this are a part of Luminar 4 now. Uh, but I'm gonna use them just to show you the effect that they have. If you're just editing with Luminar 3, you won't be able to use these currently. Okay, the first thing I deal with normally is my sky. So I am going to, we had moody skies that day, I am going to go for a really moody sky effect. Then I am going to I use the Accent AI filter and I'm going to bring everything up as best it can. And I've got a nice one there. The next filter I'm going to do, I take the blues out of my images. So I'm going to add a polarizing filter in just to create a slight contrast. Then I am going to pull the blue out of the sky so that we've got a nice moody sky here. And then the luminance out of it as well. Next thing is one of the filters that is a part of Luminar 4. So you won't have this option currently. 
Uh, this is just from the beta testing stage. So it's AI structure. As you see, there's nothing there when I sit, hover over it. This is from the beta testing stage that I still have this within it. So I'm now going to push the AI structure. And look what that, whoa, too much there. But look what it does to the image. It's just made everything pop within that. And I'm going to leave this quite a kind of grungy, moody, dramatic uh, edit for this image here. Am I going to pull out any of the colours in this? I don't think so, but I'll give it a go just to see. So if I lift the oranges, yep, I'm going to leave them. I'm going to push the yellows slightly, which also will affect up here. Yep, that's the effect I am after. The blues I'm quite happy with. Am I going to add a vignette to this? It doesn't need it, but I'm just going to show you how it works for this image. If I go like that, that just looks terrible and horrible. But So I'm just going to put the slightest vignette in around there. I'm very happy with that. So you can see just how going through these small changes has went from there to there in a very short time. And I intentionally hurried through this to show you how quick it can bring your images to life. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit apply. So last but not least, as I said, I use this as a plugin for Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back in. This again is just my workflow. I'm going to take that back into the camera raw filter as if that focus stacked image is the first image I actually took. And I'm going to use a couple of little edits in here just to finish off the image. So I'm going to reset my local corrections. I'm going to bring the exposure down slightly here. I'm going to put a slight more drama in that sky, some more mood. I'm going to drop the exposure in it. And I'm going to use the brush. I'm going to erase some of that drama and mood from here. Just to highlight everything. I am then going to reset once again. Reset local correction, and I'm actually just going to pick out some highlights in the grass there and here and here. I'm just going to use the highlights that are there, but emphasize them ever so slightly more. So I'm going to draw a radio filter on there. I'm going to turn off the overlay, and I'm just going to boost that. So you can see what it can actually do if you go too far. So I'm just going to boost that ever so slightly. 15 will do. I'm going to use it in there as well. And hopefully you can see that happening. This one, hopefully you see that happening as well. I want to compress that overlay slightly, so I'll bring it down there. I'll give a slight bit of light to that just to emphasize it. Possibly a slight bit in there so that your eye is drawn through this. Because we've got a nice lead up through here. I and I'll bring that down just to fit there. I'll turn the overlay off. I actually prefer, you can turn the overlay off and on by using the V shortcut on your keyboard as well. Uh, but I'm going to just emphasize some of these areas in here just to bring it through. And then we've got a nice lead through. Will I put a vignette in this one? Doesn't need it now. We've got a nice flow through this entire image. But I'm always going to check. So I'm going to enter effects. I've got away with that, hardly any vignette at all. I'm now going to click OK. And as you can see, that is the final image there. So the entire process was relatively short. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully you see the, the editing styles. I see everyone edits different. This is just how I'm comfortable. I find Luminar and Luminar 4. I've been fortunate enough to try the beta version of that as well. I find that they speed up my workflow and they get the results that I need quicker. Not that I need quicker, that I want quicker than Photoshop. A slider in Luminar can be a couple of the processes in Photoshop. It's not there to replace any editing software, it's there to complement it. So for me, it's well worth trying. And as I said, if you want to give it a try, I'll put the link below, the trial link below for Luminar 3.
there's a few prizes for the day. And what Skyrim are going to do is they are going to present first, second and third prizes. And how we're going to do this is whether it's on the Facebook page itself from the Etif Moor waterfall uh, or within Instagram, we're going to ask you to use the hashtag, and I'll put it below, hashtag Skyrim Feature Scotland. And there is a first, second and third prize. The first prize will be the Luminar software plus a goodie bag and there'll be second and third prizes as well. So please feel free if you want to edit your images and post them using that hashtag and also post them on the Facebook page as well. It's because I understand from what I got from you today, some people are on Instagram, some people are on Facebook. So feel free to post on both. And that way we see from everybody who is there, all the attendees there, we can see all the images. Now, what I'll do is we'll give you two weeks from you watching this video. So two weeks on Wednesday, whatever date that is, I'll put it up here. That will be the final date for entry for this competition. It's, it's a fun competition, but it's aimed at introducing you to the software to see if it fits within your workflow, whether you use it as a standalone software or whether you use it as a plugin for Lightroom or Photoshop. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. A big thumbs up for this video always helps me. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.